Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno. We are here at the European premiere for the true story of my week with Marilyn. We chat to some of the cast and crew to find out more about it. Welcome this evening. Thank you. A premiere for a fine film. Uh, we hope so. Have you seen it? Yes, I have. Oh, I saw great. it this morning. Great. Because I know it's always, um, I'm actually shooting abroad at the moment, so I've sort of come back to Marilyn World. And it's like, I'm just like, oh, it's, it's, it's all rather exciting, actually. To bring it's, it into uh, the UK, it's uh, yeah. appropriate, isn't it? Yeah. And I believe this was shot in Pinewood, the same studio yes. that, that the original film was shot in. Can you tell us more about that? It was. We, we went back, we were actually in uh, her dressing room. We shot in her dressing room. We shot in the studio that they shot The Prince and the Showgirl, the corridors, all the backstage areas at Pinewood. So, yeah, very authentic. We even got the house that she lived in, which is Parkside House. And no one had been allowed to film in there before, but they allowed us in, which is great. Did that really help sort of capture the essence and the energy of, of who this lady was? Absolutely did. I mean, it's, it's, um, there's something, um, something weird about going into some of those places. And I, I don't sort of believe that the spirit is still there, but there's something about the location that makes you feel it. And you've got such a superb cast as well. How was that getting everybody together? It was always difficult to get a cast together, mainly about availabilities, because I, I don't know, we, we had to shoot all of Judy Dench's stuff ahead of time because she wasn't available for the shoot. And then you sort of have to structure it around all these actors. But they, they were great. It was a really good cast. What's it like for you to play, play in a period piece? Oh, look, lovely. I mean, the last time I sort of did anything like that was Doctor Who, which was the 30s, and very much kind of, you know, show girly. And so it was, you know, the minute they put the lipstick and the shoes on you, you think, you know, you, you kind of feel the, the, feel the period. Did you have to change your kind of style of acting to incorporate that particular period of time? No, I mean, there's, a, there's definitely an accent, you know, which, which, which they had, you know, that... It is more clipped and it's definitely, you know, sort of more... Received pronunciation. Exactly. So I didn't watch The Only Way is Essex to prepare for the role. But, you know, I, uh, yeah, definitely there was something. I just talked to my mother. Did you survive being Marilyn's publicist? Very easily. It was a great pleasure to, to, uh, to play the part, to play a hard-bitten, um, not quite wisecracking, but certainly sort of uh, cynical uh, American publicist. It's, a, it's an interesting part that you've got there because you're, you're not, not bad, but you're not good. You're very sort of straight down the line, aren't I'm you? The butt of joke for the British, you know, because he's such a classic, almost, uh, you, you, you'd think he was fictional because he's so perfect. That kind of, uh, it's very wittily written of someone who comes into Britain and sort of views it as small time and... It's good. It was a total joy. I mean, you, you never know how it's going to turn out when you, make, when you set out to write a film or how it's going to finish up. And when something is better than you imagined it was going to be, you have to be just really pleased, you know? And, and the, the, the book and the, and the film is obviously very subjective for, from um, a Colin's point of view. Did you sort of go outside of the, of the book as well to, to research Marilyn and, and get yeah, the truth behind her? a little her? bit. You do. I mean, I read a lot about Marilyn, but it, the... the, the Colin's account of it is so sweet and so poignant and feels so true that you didn't really need to go too far away from what he said. I mean, I use a bit of artistic license, a bit of imagination, because some of Colin's conversations that he records in his diary, well, they sound a bit stilted from this distance, and you're never quite sure how true that was. So you just kind of, you know, you embroider. But it's basically what's in, in the story. That, you know, it's just such a lovely story. So. I think what struck me with Marilyn was that, that she was... Um, she was she was obviously troubled, and but there was also, um, she's very clever. She knows how to handle men. She, yeah, she's very clever and she knew how to handle men. I mean, I think the thing that one forgets about Marilyn is that she was a real person once. She was, you know, before she was a, an Andy Warhol poster, before she was just an icon, she was, a, she was only 30 when she made this film. And she was, she was clever, she was self-taught, she wasn't a dumb blonde and she got confused in the public mind with this, the characters she played and it was very hard for her. But of course, she got to the very top in Hollywood and as Sir Laurence Olivier says in the film, you don't get that far without being clever and tough. Um, and I think Marilyn was pretty clever and of course she knew what effect she had on men, she really did and she used that pretty straightforwardly at times, you know, she really did. Very much a coming of age story isn't it yeah. for Colin? It is, yeah, it's, um, I feel like there's, although this guy comes from privilege and has a sort of very eccentric background, he's grown up with, you know, Vivian Lee and Laurence Olivier hanging around his house, Margot Fontaine even, he, um, he's still, a, he, he's determined to prove himself to himself and to his family and, and so there isn't every man quality to it. I hope people 
can access and, and enjoy the craziness of what that experience must have been like. I mean, can you imagine going and working on a film set with all these icons in sort of rural England? You know, it, it was, it's an extraordinary story. It's so. like rabbits, rabbits in headlights. Completely. Isn't it? There was a lot. Of, but what was amazing for me is, you know, we had this sensational group of actors Ken Branner, Dame Judi Dench. Derek Jacobi, Simon Russell, so for, and then actors of my generation, Emma Watson and Dom Cooper. So for me, there was like, you know, it wasn't much acting needed when it came to sort of certainly with these guys watching the watching the big guns. I just sat there, just, <laughs> I wide eyed. Yeah, there was a lot to learn for you probably as well. Yeah, it was absolutely, and I mean, I felt both Michelle and I it felt like a sort of. It was a real treat to be able to go every day to work and, and to do a scene with another knight of the realm or a you know, great sort of icon of British theatre or film and uh, it, was a, no, it was very special. You're playing Colin's mother, aren't you? Yes, I am, yes. Can you tell Eddie us a little Redmayne. bit more? <laughs> well, it's kind of, you know, when you look at some gorgeous young man like Eddie Redman and then you realise that you're playing his mum, it's, it's a bit sad. But, um, uh, yes, she's a real character, Jane Clark, and... Um, I'm literally that much, you know, very small part in the beginning of the film, but it's a wonderful film and uh, really, really well made and well, brilliantly acted by all these other brilliant people. So. And what were you, you're working with a first time feature director, what was that like? Well, I know Simon very well. I've worked with him quite a few times as a producer and, and funny enough, I did a play with him at the Donmar last year, so um, we, we kind of go back a long way, so it was business as usual and and, and touching upon we, 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 the, the theme or one of the themes of the film is, is the classic actor against the method actor what's your feeling on that oh I love it um, yeah I think it was I think it's so well rep represented in uh, very very American style acting English style acting particularly of that period as well I think we have become a little bit more method in this country than we were in the whatever it was 60s um, so, um, I, yeah, I think it's really interesting and it works very well sometimes to quite humorous effect um, and sometimes it's, I mean, it's very, very moving. I think the thing I took away from the film is I really felt like, having seen it, that I, I really understood much more about Marilyn's very painful life and existence as this sort of, this very lonely star and I think Michelle Williams is absolutely extraordinary in it. She really, really is. She does immerse herself in it, doesn't she? Oh my goodness, she really does and you really understand and it's so much more, I mean she gets all the walk and the voice and she looks really like her but it's a much deeper, on a much deeper level than that. It's, it's a brilliant performance and such a high, you know, such a risk to play Marilyn Monroe and everyone has their own take on who she was and what she was and how she looked and how she sounded and, blah, blah, blah. and she does it brilliantly. And you had such a, a great cast for your directorial feature debut. Yeah. What was that like? Um, it was great, you know, I mean, uh, directors always do better if they've got a good cast. So uh, I was very lucky with this cast, very lucky indeed. Michelle Williams and, and Kenneth Branagh, a great team. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Couldn't be better. And it, was it important for you? Because what I noticed with both performances, that they really do capture the essence and, and, and the, um, the, the actions of, of the parts that they're playing as well. Was that very important for you to bring that out? Uh, yes, it was. I mean, you know, uh, the kind of actors I had are tremendous researchers who do their best to find the, uh, the truth and the detail in it and I think that's one of the reasons their performances are so textured you know. And uh, for you what is it the method or the classical? Both I think you know that's the point great great performances are both about the exterior the external acting and the interior and uh, 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 you know Michelle and Ken are brilliant at both. If you think about if Marilyn Monroe was alive now and the kind of security that she would get, it, it's extraordinary. A, extraordinary what 50 years can make. Well, the scene in the film where we go to Mayfair and she wants to go shopping in Aspreys, I mean, it was a bit of a mob thing anyway, like for us as a film crew being there. You know, I actually felt a bit like it might have felt if it really was Marilyn Monroe. I mean, it was, it sounds a bit obvious, but it was amazing. Yeah. You know. Apart from obviously your, the part that you had in the film, what, what struck you? What, what, what was the heart of the film for you? The heart of the film is this relationship between a very innocent and charming young man who suddenly finds himself in the affections of this legend. And I was just saying to somebody else, there never really has been anybody quite like Marilyn Monroe, and I don't think there ever will be. You just still just have to mention her name and everybody knows what you're talking about. Paula Strasberg, yes. tell us more about her. Well, uh, Paula Strasberg was, an, uh, was a 
uh, the wife of Lee Strasberg, who started the Strasberg School of, uh, of Method Acting. And she was his conduit, really. Uh, and Marilyn wanted, felt that uh, by doing the method, she would be a better actress. And uh, uh, Paula was there all the time with her, uh, through the Misfits as well. Um, so she relied on her tremendously. She was, she was a real confidant to her. That's what I got from the film yes, as well. Yes. Uh, did you feel that too? Yes. Oh, to God, yes. I mean, Michelle and I had a wonderful, created a wonderful relationship together. And, and um, I love her. I think she's wonderful. We had a great time. We had a good laugh. And we did some good work. I think we did some good work off the screen as well as, sorry, as, as on. To me, there's like three relationships within this film. There's obviously the, the one with Colin, yeah. uh, the one with Sir Lawrence, Olivier, and also the relationship between the Before method them. and, and, and That's classic. The clash. Yes. That's the wonderful clash between them. They came from such different ways of working. I mean, also, Marilyn was ill a lot of the time, so she wasn't on set, and if she got upset, she would have fl hot flushes and all that. I mean, it was complicated and interesting, just an interesting dynamic between the two. Was it interesting? Two ways of working, two ways, completely different way of working. And, and, and back then as well, it was so completely black and white. Were, were you aware of that until you went sort of back? It wasn't black and well. It was the, the lines started to get blurred. I mean, the things about American movie acting, it was, it suddenly started to turn up into that. It wasn't what Olivier had, had come from, which was the stage, and trying to amalgamate the two was was uh, um, beginning to burgeon. So that period was at the beginning of the method. I mean, if you think of uh, Marlon Brando and Rod Steiger, these are all guys coming from the method school of acting. But Sir Lawrence, would I be right in saying he's at a crossroads in his career when we see him in the film? In the film he is, yeah. He's the most respected and admired actor in the world, but he wants to be more current and more sort of edgy, and uh, so he is thrilled to be working with the biggest movie star in the world, Marilyn Monroe, at the height of her fame, arriving at Heathrow and stopping traffic. It's a gridlock when she arrives. And, uh, and that's pretty much what happens for the rest of the time. It's a kind of a gridlock, personality-wise. Uh, they just don't get on. Uh, their working methods are opposed. He's a disciplinarian. If he says 8 o'clock, that's when you get there. She gets there when the muse strikes her, when the feeling is with her. And, uh, of course, in the end result, uh, when she gets it right, it's so wonderful. Someone says in the film, when she gets it right, you don't look at anybody else. That's great news for Laurence Olivier, the director. It's not great news for Laurence Olivier, the actor, because he's in the scene with her. That was tough for him. Was it interesting for you as an actor exploring the relationship between the two? It was fascinating, uh, because it was at its most extreme, this idea of the method, people who get totally into character and need to feel it, prepare it, you know, um, bring up sense memory. She had an acting coach the whole time, Paula Strasberg. When Marilyn wanted to convey being in love, Paula Strasberg says, think of the things that you love, Coca-Cola, Frank Sinatra. Olivier is hearing this and saying, I don't know, that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, why, don't, why don't you just play the scene? Why don't you just say, I love, why don't you just pretend? Um, and so that sort of clash and his frustration at it was very fascinating. And, you know, I have um, unusual experience of directing films that I've acted in and so I could to some extent feel his pain. I've never had anybody behave quite as Marilyn did but you know you start to learn as a director it's whatever it takes and in the end the audience don't know that you had a bad day they only know if the scene is good or the performance is good and Marilyn turned out to give a fantastic performance. So Lucy she's very sweet but I think she's very savvy as well. Is that she's how you very saw? savvy exactly she's considering how young she is she felt very knowing to me sort of like beyond her years and uh, that was something that really appealed to me, that she sort of, she was sort of, obviously the situation, the situation she found herself in, which was that uh, Colin sort of falls in love with, with somebody else, um, is, is a tricky one, but she kind of understands it and is above it, and she deals with it in a very uh, graceful way. So. And what, what did you feel about the script when you first read it? Um, it was such a page turner. I read it in one train journey, I couldn't put it down. Um, and I knew instantly that I wanted to be, that if I could be part of it, I really wanted to be part of the film. Um, I mean, you've obviously acted with some, some great screen icons okay, already, yes. obviously with your career, <laughs> but you, you've got to act with some more as well in this film. I know, one. unbelievable. Um, yeah, Judy Dench, Kenneth Branagh, um, I mean, just an amazing, amazing cast. Um, I was thrilled. I mean, it's we. I think it's a very special film, and I'm just 
really honoured to be part of it. Well, that's it from the European premiere of My Week with Marilyn, where Marilyn really does give an Oscar-winning performance. I'm Claire Bueno, and you're watching Premier Scene. And remember, for all your filmmaker interviews and future film events, come to premierscene.net. So Lawrence, would I be right in saying he's at a crossroads in his career when we see him in the film? In the film he is, yeah. He's the most respected and admired actor in the world, but he wants to be more current and more sort of edgy, and uh, so he is thrilled to be working with the biggest movie star in the world, Marilyn Monroe, at the height of her fame, arriving at Heathrow and stopping traffic. It's a gridlock when she arrives, and, uh, and that's pretty much what happens for the rest of the time. It's a kind of a gridlock, personality-wise. Uh, they just don't get on. Uh, their working methods are opposed. He's a disciplinarian. He says 8 o'clock, that's when you get there. She gets there when the muse strikes her, when the feeling is with her. And uh, of course, in the end result, uh, when she gets it right, it's so wonderful. Someone says in the film, when she gets it right, you don't look at anybody else. That's great news for Laurence Olivier, the director. It's not great news for Laurence Olivier, the actor, because he's in the scene with her. That was tough for him. Was it interesting for you as an actor exploring the relationship between the two? It was fascinating uh, because it was at its most extreme, this idea of the method, people who get totally into character and need to feel it, prepare it, you know, um, uh, bring up sense memory. She had an acting coach the whole time, Paula Strasberg. When Marilyn wanted to convey being in love, Paula Strasberg says, think of the things that you love, Coca-Cola, Frank Sinatra. Olivier is hearing this and saying, I don't know, that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, why, don't, why don't you just play the scene? Why don't you just say, I love, why don't you just pretend? Um, and so that sort of clash and his frustration at it was very fascinating. And, you know, I have um, unusual experience of directing films that I've acted in, and so I could, to some extent, feel his pain. I've never had anybody behave quite as Marilyn did. But, you know, you start to learn as a director, it's whatever it takes. And in the end, the audience don't know that you had a bad day. They only know if the scene is good or the performance is good. And Marilyn turned out to give a fantastic performance. Well, well I, you touched upon it because you've acted and directed yourself. Did that allow you then just to be able to concentrate on, on playing Olivia? And I have to say, you, you were wonderful because I just it really much. looked like I was looking at Olivia on screen. Thank you very much. We had a great director in Simon Curtis and... Uh, I was actually finishing directing Thor for Marvel at the time and there was something very good about directing a movie and being a little crazed. Uh, so I'd leave the set at Pinewood at eight, nine o'clock in the evening, I would drive to Shepparton where the Marvel boyos were and where my composer Patrick Doyle was and we'd do another two or three hours, we'd be watching rushes late at night, visual effects shots and doing conference calls with Hollywood. Uh, so I had a little bit of that going on anyway, but with Simon at the helm I was able to just concentrate on playing Olivier. So when I went in, started listening to him, reading the Bible as I put on the makeup and everything for a couple of hours. For the rest of the day I never went near a phone or any other kind of distraction. I loved just being him and in the real place, whether it was the 
house in Windsor where she lived or Pinewood Studios where they made the film. It was a real immersion kind of uh, experience. Awesome. Yeah, and, and that, was, that was fun. So one felt as though one was in the presence of ghosts, walking in the footsteps of the great, and uh, that was very, you know, it was a very enjoyable experience.